بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيعف توفيق to continue our study of Islamic plan for life this is the second part on family uh, today we start with formation of family so marriage is the way in Islam to form a family and before marriage naturally the question is how to select your spouse if you believe something is very important then you try to plan for it with the best way that you can in our life uh, marriage is one of the most important decisions that we make uh, so we have to be very careful about it and we have to be sincere about it we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help we shouldn't take unnecessary risk so one of the things that the book highlights is you have to clarify for yourself why you are getting married you have to have a realistic uh, understanding of marriage if marriage is for the sake of uh, some material gains for example our hadith says that if someone marries someone because of money or because of beauty only then Allah would leave that person to the money or beauty of that person and that person would not be satisfied but if someone marries someone for Iman then hadith says Allah would give that person money and beauty meaning that Allah would make your mind and heart open to see beauties of that person and would give you barakah so every human being is beautiful just we need to see their beauties and rezq and barakah come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah we talk about it later so if for the sake of Allah I marry someone then Allah can make me really enjoy my life but if I just say oh this person is rich and it's enough for me or this person is beautiful and enough for me then it would be just you and this and you know that no amount of money can be sufficient no amount of beauty can be sufficient for people who become greedy they always would you know feel sad and they always want more also in our hadith it's very much recommended that, that one of the times that you have to really make dua and ask for khair istikhara here in the sense of talabul khair is for marriage even we have recommended prayer that you pray and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you with finding suitable person there are different things that we have to consider one is to be matching each other this has different elements partly can be for example matching in 
age, although it doesn't need to be necessarily the same age or, you know, uh, for example, woman has to be younger always, but age is a factor to consider. But more than that is understanding. There, sometimes a person is very, very mature and very wise, and the other party is always acting like children. You know, this makes life miserable, <laughs> even if other things are okay, but for a person who is really understanding and the other person is like a child, it's very difficult. Or someone is very responsible, very spiritual, the other one is just thinking about, uh, you know, instant pleasure, etc. So, having not exactly the same, but similar attitude towards life and major questions of life is very important. Sometimes two people are both interested in dunya and they can have maybe happy life. Maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe. But if one person is interested in dunya and one person who is very religious, sometimes it doesn't work. Because always whenever they want to plan, they want to make a decision, uh, there's a difference. So people who are interested in dunya, they have to be either open to change, which is very good. So you can marry someone who is religious and then you are open to learn, to improve. But if you want to be uh, maintaining your uh, standards and just thinking by marrying a religious person everything will be sorted out it's not going to work and maybe it's creating problems so it's very much a matter of having same expectations of life same attitude M maybe they are not the same level but the, both are happy to work together to improve themselves this works To find someone who is known to be responsible, someone who is uh, practicing, especially when it comes to uh, halal and haram. We don't uh, expect this uh, person, for example, to make all the mustahabbat, for example, or all the ibadat. But if they know something is haram, then that's the bottom line. If someone is observing halal and haram and has this much of taqwa, then this person in the life also would be very careful not to do anything to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be kind is also very important. If someone is unkind, if someone is selfish, uh, it's very difficult to live with them. Uh, to be also considering families is important. Sometimes uh, a person might be good, but there are issues with the family that may affect your life. They may not let you have a you know, peaceful life or they may you know, have bad impact on your children. We cannot always say, no to whoever comes from a family which is not very righteous but you have to consider and you have to really see the risks which are there because families are very important you are not just marrying one person you are marrying a person that belongs to a family and surrounded by a net of relations Marrying people who are rude is discouraged. People who have no haya and modesty is discouraged. People who do not observe etiquette with respect to strangers before marriage. This should not be people that we uh, you know, trust them because uh, if there is no haya before marriage, it's very difficult that this person changes afterwards. People who drink 
khamr or wine, sharab al khamr, in our hadith it said that you shouldn't marry or don't give your daughter to them. Then there is a mention of some of the manners and etiquettes of marriage. And one of the manners is to announce. In Islam, it is recommended that when you marry, you announce it. Rasulullah prohibited private or, you know, secret marriage. When you marry, you should let people know. Because if people then see you, for example, with someone, uh, they may become suspicious. They may, you know, uh, somehow you are putting them into guna, into sin. That they think, you know, you are with someone who is not uh, your wife or your husband. And also this would give impression that people without marriage, you know, can be together in the community. So whenever two people decide to marry, uh, this should be made announced into the community. And there should be celebration, some walima. Uh, because it's a very important thing. Of course, we shouldn't uh, spend too much on you know these weddings, etc. But it's important to have something. Then there is a mention of marriage of Lady Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha and Amirul Mu'minin, and how uh, simple it was, and with a simple. Uh, um, way of uh, Amir al Mu'minin selling his uh, something like his armor or shield, you know, he purchased some furniture for home and then uh, Rasulullah himself also made some sweets from date and oil and also said to slaughter a sheep and then he said to Amir al Mu'minin, invite everyone that you like. So Amir al Mu'minin says, I went to Masjid and was full of companions of the Prophet, and I felt embarrassed to invite only some people. So he said, I went uh, on top of uh, a platform or something uh, and said, Everyone is invited to the Walima of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, and all people came. And he said, I was very embarrassed not to have enough food. But Rasulullah said, I ask Allah for barakah. This is in Amali by Shaykh Tusi. So although they were not rich, but still they wanted to share this great occasion with other people. Then there is a section in the book about obstacles for formation of family, for marrying. Many people, they say, I cannot marry because of financial problems. Of course, uh, mostly maybe men, they say, you know, uh, I need to... Uh, finish my study, I need to find a work, I need to save money, you know, some people, you know, uh, even say I have to, for example, you know, find my, you know, house, I buy my house, etc. But, uh, although you should have some basic level of uh, financial stability, for example, at least uh, you have a job or you have a support of family or you are a person that is working and inshallah there is an uh, you know a kind of uh, opportunity for you available you are not a person who is totally poor and has nothing uh, if there is such you are like any other person that you are in the f you know studying working etc you shouldn't then put too much expectations on yourself or on the person who proposes marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that uh, 
اِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Marry your boys and girls. If they are poor, I am not literally translating, but something like that. If they are poor, Allah would make them rich from His favor. يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ one of the things that opens rizq is marriage. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, marry, this would increase your rizq. Another place, a person complained to Rasulullah about his financial problem, and Rasulullah said, marry. And when he married, his financial situation became better but Ghana is also very important uh, you cannot waste money and you know spend too much money so marriage along with being content because if you're not content nothing can be sufficient for you Then there is a discussion about factors that lead to a strengthening family and fortifying family. We have two aspects. One is the legal aspect, which is just to set up the boundaries. Inshallah, we will talk about legal duties and rights of husband and wife. But this is only the minimum. You cannot run a family just with these legal things. The main thing, the engine of family life is akhlaq, is morality, is moral commitment of husband and wife. Their decision to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking after each other. This is the main thing. Otherwise, if we just want to operate at the level of legal requirements, it becomes dry and boring and just people, you know, have to suffer. It's like a community. In community, we trust each other, we love each other, we socialize. If I have some worries. I meet my brother in faith, my sister in faith. They talk to each other. If we were just here, like you know, uh, legal citizens, and you know, just you know, doing some business and going, this was not like community center. Family is much more. Family is the best place we have for uh, relating to each other, supporting each other, understanding each other. So. By no means people should understand Islamic model of family by studying rulings in fiqh. Because rulings in fiqh is just, uh, are just for what? For the basic framework. The rights of husband, the rights of women. Everyone should go out of their way to accommodate other persons. Not only needs, but comfort. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when a husband looks at his wife or wife looks at her husband Allah would look at both of them with rahmah so simple husband and wife just looking at each other with kindness brings Allah's mercy to them and when they hold the hand of each other, their sins drop from between their fingers. This is why we said marriage for us is very spiritual. In another hadith, it says that on the day of judgment, a man from my ummah, my nation, will be brought while 
he has no righteous deed that would qualify him for heaven. But Allah says, take him to heaven because he was kind to his family. So being kind to family is so great. Then we have discussion about being kind to children. Allah has put this great love for children in the heart of mother and father and they look at their children uh, as if that's the greatest part of themselves. Not only it's part of them but they always want to give priority to their children, they want to make their children happy without any expectation, without any uh, demand, especially, uh, you know, mothers, uh, many times just automatically, by nature, by instinct, uh, they make themselves their time, you know, everything available for their children. Uh, they don't uh, do this in order to receive some uh, thing from them or sometimes even they do it even without thinking that these are going to be rewarded by Allah. They just do it naturally. And this is why having children is another step of getting rid of your ego. First marriage and then having children make you very much able to get rid of your selfishness. The problem is that sometimes we marry and remain selfish or we remain selfish for example with respect to children for example sometimes. But many people alhamdulillah when they marry they grow they now think about their family, about their children, grandchildren, alhamdulillah. But then they need to grow one step more and love all other people. This is a practice. Loving your children should help you to love all children of the world. I cannot say, you know, I only love my children. I only uh, care about my children. I'm only concerned about my children. I think most of people through uh, unconditional, unselfish love for their children, they are prepared to have a large heart to love other children. Normally, when, especially mothers, you know, when, for example, they look at other people, they remember of their mothers, how much their mothers must have, you know, sacrificed for them, you know, and they don't want any harm to anyone. Of course, fathers also, but in mothers, maybe it's more obvious. We have lots of things about uh, how to deal with your children. Inshallah, some of it I will discuss next week. But uh, you can also yourself uh, find that how much we have to give support to our children, especially in the early years when for them father and mother are like their gods, like their lords. They need to receive unconditional love. This doesn't mean that whatever they do you don't mind. No, it means that they should know that even if you tell them not to do something, it's because you love them. It's not that you love them part of the day, part of the night. You always love them. You have always support for them. And this is very good for their future. If in the early years they receive this support, for all their life they have sense of self-esteem and honor. Many times, maybe people in the families receive their first uh, you know, harms on their 
mental and psychological being without anyone knowing. Then there is a discussion about being good tempered in the family. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once asked, who among mu'mineen are better in their iman? And then he said, those who are more kind with their families, who have good uh, temper with their families. Imam Sadiq salam said, whoever is kind with his family, his life will be extended. Then we have a discussion about serving each other, serving your spouse, your family, and looking after their needs, even emotional needs, not just giving food or dress, you know, or money or education, emotional need, attention. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a, a wife gives water to her husband, it's better for her than one year of fasting and tahajjud. Also, he said to Amir al Mu'mineen about a man helping you know, his wife. Oh, Ali, no one would help his family like his wife except who is Siddiq, most truthful, or Shaheed. Shaheed maybe here means witness, Shuhada. Oh, a man that Allah wants the best of dunya and akhirah. So those who serve and help their wives are either Siddiq or Shaheed or someone that Allah wants the best of dunya and akhirah for them. Respect. Respect is very important. Honor and respect. Uh, so Rasulullah said, the best of you are the best for their families and I am the best of you for my family. So Rasulullah was the kindest person with respect to his family. And he said, no one would honor women unless they are themselves honorable. So noble people, honorable people honor women. And no one would humiliate women unless a mean person. Uh, still, this is a great thing, but if you want to understand greatness better, you have to understand the culture of that time and in which culture Rasulullah said this. Unfortunately, even today, some people you know, don't respect women enough, but at that time, they used to treat women like just some goods. And women had very low position in the society, in the you know, fabric of that society. And Rasulullah so much is emphasizing on respect for women. The next thing is to be moderate and lenient in family. Family is not a military base that you know, everyone has very fixed rules and you know, uh, it's good to have discipline but there should be also some, you know, lenience and uh, people should not expect too much. When it comes to offering, yes, you try to offer the best. But when it comes to expecting and demanding, demand the least. Then about bringing joy to home. Many times we have outside, you know, maybe problems and difficulties. But when we go home, we should try as much as possible to make home a happy place, especially for children. 
Rasulullah said, whoever makes his family happy, Allah would make from that joy, that happiness, a creature that till day of judgment would ask forgiveness for him. So imagine if every day you make your family happy, what would happen? When some new uh, things come, you know, new fruits, for example, come in the big early, you know, season. Rasulullah said, if you take for your children, it has the reward of carrying sadaqah. Even if you give it to your children to make them happy, it's like, you know, carrying sadaqah. And you should start with your daughters. And whoever is kind with, you know, their daughters, it's like someone who has cried out of fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever cries out of fear for Allah would be forgiven. And if you make your daughter happy, then on the day of judgment, Allah would make you happy. Anas, the servant uh, of the Prophet, says Rasulullah, when he was with children, he was make, trying to make them happy. And he was, you know, making, you know, uh, jokes for them. Or, you know, he was very much trying to make children happy. The next is about uh, spending time with family. Rasulullah says, A man sitting next to his family is better in the eyes of Allah from i'tikaf in my masjid. A man sitting with his family is better than i'tikaf in my masjid. Of course, if your family enjoy you sitting with them because <laughs> Sometimes, unfortunately, people may prefer. But if we have this mentality, inshallah, we learn also how to make our presence a source of joy for them. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't go for a takaf and just sit at home. But this is to give you the real value because sometimes we underestimate the time that we spend with family. So it says it's that great. Otherwise, uh, this doesn't mean to discourage people to do a takeoff, etc. But if it comes to choose between your t family when they need you and going a takeoff, priority goes to be with family. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Allah loves mu'min and his family and children. The most lovable thing in the eyes of Allah is to see a man and his wife and children sitting on a table and eating together. When families sit together for food, for meal, Allah would look at them with mercy and before they stand up their sins are forgiven. How important is to have a meal together. Then about coping with bad akhlaq of your husband and wife. Sometimes people are still very young, maybe they are not very experienced, or I don't know, some people have developed bad temper, etc. This may happen. We need to be patient and with patience to change them, with showing love, show them that they can improve, with highlighting their good qualities, encourage them to improve. We shouldn't just you know, fight. Rasulullah said, if a wife copes with the bad temper of her husband, she would be saved from punishment of grave and would be resurrected with Fatima. 
this woman would have reward of 1,000 martyrs and reward of one year of ibadah. Also, if a man, because of Allah, is patient with bad akhlaq, bad temper of his wife, for every day and night that he is patient, Allah would give reward like re reward of Hazrat Ayyub in his suffering. So you shouldn't think you are wasting your time by being patient with your husband or wife. No, this is a great jihad for you. Unfortunately, if we only think sometimes that for getting closer to Allah, we need to do more ibadah, we need to do more activities. But sometimes there are simple <laughs> opportunities for us. These are opportunities to gain more than what we ga can gain from other things. Number 10 about responsibility. We are going to be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about our family. A man would be questioned about the way he has looked after his family and also a husband, a wife, etc. Rasulullah, thank you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever leaves and abandons his family without support is cursed. Sometimes people don't support their family or they disappear, they leave them without support. Sometimes when actually there is a catastrophe in family, unfortunately some people decide to run away and leave all the problems, you know, for uh, the other party. This is not the way. Inshallah in the next session we will continue and inshallah we will finish this section on family. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to experience Islamic lifestyle in every aspect, especially when it comes to family life. And I ask Allah to make our families strong and united and exemplar, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.